Government to pay salaries to public officers one week ahead of schedule. Details to this story and more coming up in the National Report. Welcome back. I am Wendy Edmond with the National Report for today, Tuesday, January 15, 2018. Public officers in Grenada are getting a well-deserved financial break. They will receive their January salaries more than a week ahead of schedule, and it will include a 4% salary increase and increments. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Finance, Mrs. Ophelia Wells-Conwell, was the bearer of the good news for public officers Tuesday as she made the disclosure during the weekly post-cabinet press briefing. All on Sunday would say January is a hard month. That's what persons say in general terms. Taking that uh, principle, that notion that January is a hard month, uh, and in, in, in discussions with our um, public officers, um, it was something that they would have raised, you know, P.S., I think you all should consider this and that sort of thing. So we did the analytics to determine whether or not we could accommodate it based on cash flow. And then we suggested to the government, you know, maybe this is a, a good thing that you would want to do because of the fact that January is considered a hard month. You would recall that we paid early in December. So by mid-December, we paid. So by the end of December, you know, into January, you have to wait traditionally until the, the, the 30th of January to get pay. So with all of that, considering school is, re, is you know, opening and all of that, it, we felt that as long as the cash flow permit, why not ask government to consider this? And they did. In addition to the receipt of early salaries, a salary increases of 4% and an increase in ex gratia payment minimum of $350 will be paid all at once on January 21st. P.S. Wells Conwell says government's move is affordable and will in no way disrupt the country's cash flow. Government will also make an early start towards seed payments on Thursday, 17th, January 2019. Economic growth has ended last year was 5.2%. And on average, we had 5% growth rate and we are considered one of the fastest growing countries in the ECCU um, and in the region at that. In the case of uh, to, to be able to do what we're doing at this time, of course, when we run the analytics, we have to determine that the cash flow would, have, would allow for that to happen and definitely based on our performance the cash flow did allow for us to to be able to make not just early payments but the payments with the additions on it all at once the month of january will also see a reduction in income tax by two percent the rate will now move to 28 percent the government of Grenada is moving ahead with plans to increase the pension for public officers to 70 percent this was disclosed Tuesday by Minister of Trade, Industry, Cooperatives and Caricom Affairs, Honorable Oliver Joseph, who is also Chairman of Government's Pension Engagement Committee. At the weekly post-Cabinet press briefing, Minister Joseph said, Government and the trade unions and staff associations representing public officers reached agreement on this, and it is included in the Memorandum of Understanding between the parties. While the issue of gratuity or the advanced payment of pension remain unresolved, both parties agreed on a pension of 70% for public officers. Minister Joseph explained that this is essentially a top-up of the pension paid by the National Insurance Scheme, which ranges generally from 30% to 58%, but can reach a maximum of 60%. Like the NAS pension, the government's pension will be payable at age 60 to persons who meet the qualifying criteria. That is separate and apart from the gratuity. So we are speaking specific, specifically here only of pension. When, they, when there is settlement on whatever formula is agreed upon for gratuity payment, these persons will receive it and... Also, for the workers who would have retired from the service, 
they will be giving it retroactively. So if you retired over the past few years and you only received the NIS pension, then you will get it retroactively. And if there is any adjustment to be made after everything is settled, then you will get the adjustment. But we think as a government that we ha have a responsibility to address the concerns of all these hundreds of workers who are retiring with only NIS pension to to top it up as, as we promise that we will do because almost on a daily basis, we get the call from, we hear the concerns of retirees that they are unable to exist on the NIS pension. Persons who would have already retired and are entitled only to NIS pension will be paid the difference retroactively. Although the matter of gratuity is currently deadlocked, Minister Joseph gave assurances that whatever the outcome, public officers will at that time receive what is agreed upon. The newly announced 70% pension applies only to established workers, that is, workers who have been appointed definitively by the Public Service Commission in a post within the estimates of revenue and expenditure. The minister explained that government will move subsequently to address matters relating to unestablished workers. In this next story, the Cabinet of Grenada has approved attorney at law Mr. Ali Gale as the country's new ambassador to the Caribbean community CARICOM. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs is currently taking steps to have Mr. Gill formally installed as Grenada's ambassador to CARICOM. The process will require Mr. Gill having to travel to the CARICOM Secretariat in Guyana to present his instruments of appointment to CARICOM Secretary General Mr. Owen LaRouque. Confirmation of Mr. Gill's appointment will be provided once that process is complete. This is the National Report. More news when we return. It is here again, it is here again. The Made in Grenada Expo is here again. And I just hope the whole of Grenada are ready because I sung in a clarion call. The Made in Grenada Expo is here again. The Made in Grenada Expo is on February 7th and the public is encouraged to come out and give full support and buy out all local products on show. Products manufactured right here in Grenada. 100% Grenadian. And it's happening right here at the National State. Stadium are taking in the Independence Parade and the Made in Grenada Expo one time. I am so excited. That's why I'm making a fireside. I bring my tent, my blanket, and all kind of thing. And I'm camping right here until everything's done on February 7th. The Made in Grenada Expo is here again. Welcome back. The National Celebrations Committee says the 2019 Independence Day Rally and Parade will be shifted to the Kirani James Athletic Stadium on February 7th. This has become necessary as work is presently ongoing at the Cricket Stadium to ensure the pitch and outfield are completed for the two-day, one-day internationals on February 25th and 27th when England tours the West Indies. Chairman of the NCC, Mr. John Williams, has assured that the change will not affect the celebrations. We were planning to host the uh, military parade, the rally, as well as a cultural presentation at the uh, Grenada Cricket Stadium. But uh, as you know, everyone's aware that we have the upcoming England versus the West Indies international cricket game taking place at that venue. And unfortunately, because of the timing of the games, of the, the match, we are not able to use the cricket stadium. So we were informed just a short while ago earlier on that we would have to revisit the venue for that. Uh, so fortunately what we did, we um, were able to locate all the stakeholders, all the persons who are going to be involved in the military parade as well as the cultural presentation and the rally. So I've just come from a, a side visit at the Karani James Athletic Stadium. Police were represented, the Grenada National Stadium was represented. We also have other stakeholders who are going to be involved. And I'm very pleased to say, despite the change and the challenge that we, you know, that we are faced with, we were able to put together some very constructive ideas. And um, everyone is very, um, very much more um, relaxed about moving to this new location. Uh, as I speak, as a matter of fact, the police are involved in their very first rehearsal.
Mr. Williams is appealing to patrons to support the 2019 independence activities, which commenced last Friday with the hosting of the preliminary round of competition for the Calypso final on January 26th at the Certes bus terminus. It begins at 8 p.m. And we all need to be very patriotic. Independence is something we should all be proud of, no matter where you are. Uh, what country we represent. And uh, we are very happy to know that we, as a small developing nation, we are able to celebrate 45 years as an independent nation. So I'm appealing to all, our, all the Grenadians um, here and abroad, give us your support, and in particular those who are here, to come out, support the independence, military parade, rally, and cultural presentation. We have a wonderful package. We have put together uh, a greater emphasis on our cultural heritage because we want Grenada to, we want all of us to recognize what we have achieved over the past 45 years. Our theme speaks to celebrating 45 years, building resilience and economic and social transformation. And that is what Grenada is all about. So we're appealing to Grenada, come out, bring your flags, wear your colors, celebrate your independence. The next activity will be the Independence Round the Island Motorcade on Saturday 19th. And finally, in the National Report, construction is now in progress for the state-of-the-art Early Childhood Development Center that will serve Montan and surrounding areas. Delroy Loza, Public Relations Officer in the Ministry of Social Development, Housing and Community Empowerment, paid a visit to site to gauge the progress of construction two months after the sword was turned. The Ministry of Social Development, Housing and Community Empowerment, under the stewardship of its Minister and Parliamentary Representative for the constituency of St. Andrew Northwest, the Honorable Delma Thomas, will soon provide an avenue for child growth and development in the St. Andrew area. The new Early Childhood Development Center is being funded by India UN Development Partnership Fund, the United Nations Children's Fund, and the Government of Grenada. The Mount Horn Child Development Center will be established to provide care and nurturing and will cater to young children ages 6 months to 3 years. Social worker with responsibility for early childhood in the Ministry of Social Development, Housing and Community Empowerment, Don Cyrus, is impressed with the progress of the work thus far. Well, I'm quite pleased with the, the level of work that um, the contractor was able to accomplish within the past two months because it actually started mid-November, I think 16 to be exact. And to date, I think things are progressing quite smoothly and I which really want to um, hope that uh, our May deadline will be met. And I think it will be made based on what I have seen and what I observed. Building contractor for the project, Jerry Hosford, says as with every project, there are challenges. However, his workmen are working assiduously to ensure that each challenge is dealt with accordingly. As you go through the project, you, you will meet challenges and you, you, you will meet them on forcing items. You know, so that becomes a, a big challenge. But um, and in order to, to take care of that, you also come with a cost. But at the moment, we cannot really put a cost to it. According to Cyrus, this facility will be one like no other ever constructed in Grenada since a standard has been established for the edifice. Those who were built before, some were built as models, but we did not have a standard to look at. We had the idea, we have ideas. But 220, 2017, the, early child, the standard was passed for early childhood establishment of daycare and preschools. So against this background, we, know, we are now using the standards for the building of this um, early childhood center and future early childhood center. So what we want to ensure that there are separate rooms for different age band. We have the, the correct adult staff ratio, which was one of the areas that we were weak in in the, in the past. And sometimes you come to a center and you find you have so much staff, but actually the, the standard speaks to, to every three infants, you should have one caregiver. The Mount Horn project will be the model for future facilities being constructed. For the National Report, I am Delroy Louison.
And that's it for the National Report for today, Tuesday, January 15, 2019. On behalf of all of us in the newsroom, I am Wendy Edmond thanking you for joining.